subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for future videos. When Satan works among God's people, he takes advantage of their natural desires and tendencies and the things that are appealing to them. Satan is very mindful of the things of man. He knows just what appeals to people, and he uses this knowledge to tailor enticements to their individual weaknesses. For Satan to come among God's people as a roaring lion would be very unappealing to them, but when he comes as an angel of light with pleasant, flattering words, and a smile on his face, then it is very difficult for believers not to be deceived. And yet, no matter what form he comes in, he presses mercilessly toward his one goal, which is to lead people into destruction. People serve Satan when they seek their own, and when they go against the will of God, and the leading of the Spirit. God gave Israel victory in the days of Joshua, but when a chance took of the cursed things, the wrath of God came over the children of Israel, so that three thousand of the men of Israel had to flee, before the men of Ai. God wore for Israel, as long as they were obedient to him, but when they obeyed Satan, they suffered defeat. In this case, Satan worked through their covetous desires. After Saul had sinned, by sparing the best of the sheep and oxen, which God had commanded, should be utterly destroyed, he said to Samuel. I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and your words, because I feared the people, and obeyed their voice. A second sin followed soon after. Saul wanted Samuel to act as if nothing had happened, and to continue to honor him before the elders, and the people of Israel. Satan exploited the cravings of the people. Those cravings were so strong, that even though Saul knew what the will of God was, out of cowardliness he obeyed the people. Solomon had been given a wise and understanding heart so there was no one like him, either before or after him. But Satan deceived him, because Solomon loved many foreign women from the nations, of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. By this time, Solomon had already transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and the consequences came quickly. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not loyal to the Lord his God. Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. Solomon broke the laws of wisdom, and wisdom departed from him. He who does what is evil in the sight of the Lord, is no longer wise. Solomon obeyed his wives more than God, and that was his downfall. Jesus told his disciples, that he must go to Jerusalem, and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and that he would be killed, and then raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside, and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned, and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Satan knew very well, that if Jesus had spared himself these sufferings and death, God would not have been able to raise him up. And if Jesus had not been raised up, then our faith would be in vain, and we would be the most miserable of all men. Satan would not be against that at all. Satan is also on the attack today, wherever people have a weak point. He uses the desires, that are in our corrupt human nature as his weapons. He knows them very well, and he knows that people like very much to satisfy their lusts. The scriptures call these sorts of lusts, turning aside after Satan. God wants to strengthen our will, purify our mind, and make us a strong character, firm and resolute in every way. What more could a person desire? However, if we turn aside to vanity, fashion, honor, riches, cowardliness, weakness, softness, feebleness, etc. we turn aside after Satan, and he will weaken our character, so that we become cowardly, lying, crawling, sniveling, wretched beings. We know that God's people do have tendencies toward vanity, fashion, cowardliness, honor-seeking, and feebleness, all of which serve to remove the cross and the power. This tells us that Satan is extremely active among God's people, and that it is vital now to take up a battle against him, so that we can get victory and power and remain standing after having overcome everything. For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them.
please rate the video, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell icon for future videos. And if you want to support this channel, you can click on the join button below. The video is free to use on your channel without giving me any credit. God bless you all.